my signets it's bb welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new i have a video of deck acquisitions um i'm really excited <laughs> i did a video on trading decks i wasn't happy with and i will put it in the card up there and i want to show you what i got in these trades I also got a few like Kickstarters and I um, I got a pre-order in. So we'll go through those too. But firstly, I want to show you what I traded for. I'm not going to disclose who I traded with because I feel like that's, I don't know, personal up to them. Like it doesn't, it's, they're friends. They're all friends. Why am I unhappy with where this is? Okay, are we ready? Oh, I should have put it on like where we were at. It's Gemini season and I'm a Gemini and we're not even, we're not even represented. Okay, so the first deck that I traded for was the Winter Seer Animal Oracle. I had seen this and I do have the, the botanical one, what's it called? No, really though, like what is it called? <laughs> Let me check. Yes, the Hedge Witch Botanical. So I have that one and I just really, I'm, I'm a really big fan of the watercolor, the black and white line drawing, all of the negative space in these cards. Um, so I felt like this would be a really cool addition too. I do have the Terra Oracle. So that is similar, but it's, you know, I think different enough. We'll see. We'll see which one I like reach for more. But like how beautiful. It's like really stunning. And I feel like the color in this like adds a different element to readings because you know your eye is drawn to things in maybe the other cards that you pulled that have like red in it or green in it that you didn't necessarily notice before or that you weren't focusing on as important necessarily yeah i'm really really happy with this deck i am so stressed. trading is like the funnest thing because it's like why sit with decks that you're not connecting with when you could like be handing them off to someone who would use it all the time or like feel very connected to it and then on top of that I know like people have talked about it before but trading is such low stakes I don't think I ever would have bought this deck for myself but I'm so happy to have it, you know? And I think that a lot of times, oh, there we are. Thumbnail. <laughs> um, a lot of times like the decks that we didn't prioritize or the ones that we weren't sure of are the ones that really really surprise us right I mean that's the only time they can surprise us like in a good way because we really underestimate them but what's more is that like we miss out on them so I'm happy to have not missed out on this let me know if you have this and what you use it with and if you like it I think I, I must have seen it on like a boho tarot or something you know she does all those great pairings they're like really inspiring the next one i traded for was one that was on my list um influence of the angels tarot i just really love the aesthetic of this and for some reason like spiritually i'm not into angels but visually i'm very into angels <laughs> how does that work i don't know okay this is in order so i'm gonna keep it that way But just like very old school, very European. Like 
like we're talking oh, this ace of cups might be like one of the best ace of cups i've ever seen it's so good like medieval obviously a lot of like this is not medieval but um a lot of like catholic and christian iconography i mean we're talking angels so that's what we're gonna get and i know this deck has been shown i didn't know that this deck was like kind of new i thought i had just missed the boat but being on tarot tube for so long and i don't mean making videos but watching videos on tarot tube for so long i guess it makes sense because i had never seen it before until recently not that i've seen every deck that there is but it's just not super common especially for a mass market deck that i haven't seen it I'm like, oh, this feels so thick. It's because there's a book. <laughs> the book is pretty big. And then it also has like the cards that tell you the meanings. These are kind of easy, fun flash cards. I like when they include those, especially for beginners, you know? Oh, and it also tells you the symbols. See, I've kept these aside since I've traded them and I haven't used them because I didn't want to forget to show them in a video. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, maybe we should draw one. Ugh. But I don't want to shuffle it. Okay, we're just going to go from the middle, okay? Okay, the four of pentacles. So let's find it. Four of pentacles. Fours represent stability, order, and the benefits of a solid foundation. The symbols are pentacle on a book. Okay, let's look. Okay. The book is a ledger, a record of income and expenditures. The woman balances the pentacle and book on top of her head, symbolizing balanced finances. It also conveys that money issues are on her mind, concern, or top of mind, a priority. Pentacle at the base of the table, which is that one there. Fastened onto the table with little nails, this pentacle represents the woman's immovable property assets. Oh my God, I love this book. Can you see little nails? I can't. Oh, maybe, yeah, 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 the, the dots. Okay, wow, the base of that table with like the leaves. Yeah, art's so cool. <laughs> Okay, pentacle in woman's hand. Money the woman uses for basic needs and everyday spending. Okay. Sorry, I'm like in the way. Here we go. Pentacle under woman's elbow. Discretionary funds she's hesitant to use. Box on table. Locked and shut, only the woman knows what's inside. This represents hidden assets and also hints at greed and hoarding woman focused on money the woman knows precisely what she has and that her accounts are in balance as an older woman she is no longer concerned with raising children and the money it takes to do so everything in the picture suggests she is self-sufficient if nothing changes financially she will continue to live within her means the angel reminds the woman that putting too much focus on things and money causes an unhealthy imbalance in one's life Spiritual assets, e.g. generosity, are also beneficial. Oh man, these like meanings are so long. That's amazing. Direct meaning, assessing personal finances, accounts are in balance. Assessing one's personal relationship with money and material possessions, a preoccupation with the material side of life may lead to neglecting the spiritual side of life. Hesitance to change the current situation, work, finances, residence, in order to keep things in balance. Being very aware of one's spending, prudent, but not necessarily stingy. Holding on to money, no new investments, no new spending on personal gifts, charity, excess, indulgences. The shadow meaning is hoarder mentality, obsessive concern with possessions, miserly, penny pinching, not starting or wanting to start anything new, stagnation. The angelic message 
May you always have the means to support yourself and, rem and remember money isn't everything. So very like traditional um, definitions of the cards. So nothing new as far as meanings, but like very cool. I like the angelic message and I really like the explanation of all the symbology. Like I think that's like such a cool element. Okay, anyway, I might do, well, I think I'm planning on doing a walkthrough of this deck because I think it's really special and really, really well done. And then I'll be able to read more about the art, which is like how they, I hope they talk about how they adapted like the existing art to be, you know, to reflect the traditional tarot meanings, you know, and like inserting things like pentacles, etc. Okay, the next deck that I traded for was the William Blake Tarot. This is a wild tarot. It's so weird. William Blake was like a philosopher and an artist and like all around weirdo. And um, I feel like I first, maybe I didn't first see this on Catamancy's channel, but I like first, like that's where it first piqued my interest. It has a little book. I'm not going to go through all these. I'm just going to show you. This is a deck acquisitions. This isn't a walkthrough. Okay. Um, this one is also still in order. But the illustrations are just like so compelling. Really interesting art style. Maybe not something that I would typically be into, but there's just something about it. Also, if you can tell the suits are different. So there's music. I think it was like painting, poetry. So weird. That is hilarious. Okay, let's see. Poetry. Let's get back into it. Magic. No, no, no. Magic is a, is a major. Painting. Science. Music, poetry. Okay, yeah, so cool. So that's just a quickie. I think there are walkthroughs of this. If you want a walkthrough, let me know and I'll do one. The backs are so cool. It's kind of a bigger size too. Like, I don't know if the Picatrix is a classic tarot. I think it is a classic tarot size. See? Super stoked on this though. Very, very cool. Okay, the next one is Spirit Speak. I've known about this one forever. I didn't think I wanted it. I didn't think I'd ever get it. Um, but it was something that the person I traded with like had to offer. And I was like, you know what? Let's do it. Are they upside down? Yeah. And I'm happy I did. Like, who knows? I might have a little relationship with this deck. I do like the Spirit Speak decks in general. I do have, I think, at least a couple. The Dark Days. I think that's a Spirit Speak deck, right? I believe so. Some of these are just upside down. I'm sorry. Um, it's funky. It's modern. It's a little bit like you know, weird, that's kind of their brand. I do like the black and white. If you know me, you know I like a black and white deck. It's cool. It's little, I like that it's little. If it were big, I don't think I'd be as interested in it. I think there's like this novelty, you know, it changes things when things are small. <laughs> and because these images are so minimal too, like they're, 
intentionally minimalistic. I think they like work really well in these like little pocket. Oh, King of Cups and I just watched Little Mermaid. Love it. And then it does come with this little book and I love that it's black with white writing too and handwritten. So cool. I like that element. Let's see what the King of Cups says. The king is surrounded by water, emotion, but he stays dry. He is a kind and helpful advisor. It's hard to read. He wants to be deeply in love, but is also afraid. You are the king of water. Jump in. Don't be afraid. Cool. Yeah, I like this. Okay, and my last trade was um, the Dame Darcy Queen Alice Tarot. Oh, I'm trying to like, <laughs> when it's one of these guys. How cool is this box? I love these backs too. I lagged on getting this. I did want to buy this myself and I just really didn't prioritize it or take the time. And because I guess because I wasn't sure, like I'm not like, oh my gosh, Alice in Wonderland. I know most of like what these cards are referring to because I've seen more than one Alice in Wonderland movie. Cause like, you know, there are different movies based off of the different books and there's much more in the book than like, or in the books rather than um, in like the any one movie. Um, there are some things that I like don't know what it's referring to, but I don't think that's the biggest deal. But on like an artistic level, like why did I not, excuse me, like why did I not, why did I not think that I was gonna love this? Like absolutely adore it. Why did I not? Like why did no one tell me? I'm mad, I'm mad at all, you all. I thought we were friends. No one was screaming in my comments, like, BB, why don't you own this? And so I didn't know. I didn't know any better. Do you have a favorite um, Alice in Wonderland movie? I know I sound like such a please because I haven't read the books, but do you remember, like, what was it, Alice Through the Looking Glass? And it was like in the 80s and it was terrifying and there was like a Jabberwocky and let me know if you know what I'm talking about. Is that the same one as the one with Carol Channing? Or is that a different one? No, I think that's a different one. I think that was like a made for TV movie. Do you also remember the one with like Martin Short and what's her name, I forget her name. <laughs> it was so good. Anyway, there were a lot of these. Um, maybe I should read the books. <laughs> like, please don't answer that because like, I know I should. But um, anyway, I'm really, really happy with this. So, so happy with this. Okay, next we're going to go through some decks that I have purchased in like since the beginning of the year, I guess, or they might be Kickstarters. I'll let you know. This was a pre-order the Tildwick 10th anniversary edition. I just watched a walkthrough of it last night. I may or may not do a walkthrough of it. Let me know if you want one. I know I owe you guys a lot of walkthroughs and I'm really sorry. I'm gonna try to catch up. I have a big list. But, so I'll only show a few cards of this. It's literally stunning. You definitely have to have the right lighting though because it's so muted and there's like so much going on. I really love the cup suit. I usually do though. Sorry, I'm just focused on the images. Like they're just so seductive. I don't know, hypnotic. It's 
So um, I'm, I'm sure you know, this was a really coveted deck. It, and then it went out of print and then the creator um, passed away. And so we didn't think that it was going to come back. And I think his brother, someone in the family decided to, to re um, print it to all of our benefit and joy. So I pre-ordered it as soon as I saw, because this was something that I had resigned myself that I was probably never going to get. And I remember seeing it years ago and thinking like, oh no, that's not for me, it's not my style. And boy, have I evolved. Or maybe I've just gotten to the truth of what my style really is. Because I don't think my style at its core has really changed. Um, I think I've just like found more how to like express or find my style in tarot and why I thought like the opposite is just so silly and funny to me. This is a Kickstarter and uh, I just, it's it's gotta be already in my top 10. Like I'm so, I'm so pleased with it. I really wish that there was a like, book that told the stories of the paintings but you can the book does tell you what the paintings are so you can go look up the painting and then find out the story that way I guess um it's beautiful I don't know if you can tell the gilding's like really soft it looks more yellow on the on camera but it's not, I'll talk about it. I'll talk about it more in the video. I'm gonna make a dedicated video about it. But I love the changes to like the names. I love this. I love the pink. I love the blues. Like the colors are incredible. They couldn't be better. They're very familiar like images, right? And it's just gorgeous. This is just the deck that I've been waiting for. Sorry for all the ASMR. This deck does make a lot of noise because it's like very matte. It's so, oh, the six of coins like kills me. Okay. It's so, so beautiful. Oh, I know it was in order. It's just that like they order it funny and they put the, the quartz like before. That's why we're ending on the 10 of coins. And I have a couple cards in here. <laughs> uh, okay. So the fool, the birth, the magician, the seer instead of the pre high priestess and Aphrodite instead of, um, the empress i was gonna say venus aphrodite and venus are the same thing okay and aries like you saw instead of the emperor i'll get more into that um stay tuned i will film a video i'm so 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 stoked like <laughs> so so satisfied with that kickstarter it was i really hope that this gets picked up or that they have extras go look up natasha from or tarot of aphrodite Get your hands on it if you can, it's amazing. Okay, the next deck that I bought recently was um, the Moonlit Hermit Tarot. And this is the one that I got from Honey Lou when she gave me some really pretty stones. I've seen this a couple times recently on a few different channels and um, I don't know, really piqued my interest. Like the colors and the collage style. These are extra cards. Here we go. It's just like funky and weird and gotta love like the contrast and the black backgrounds. So we'll see. I'm gonna I'm gonna work with it and see if it's a vibe. It feels like it is. Like it's very satisfying to look at but we shall see. I 
I don't know how old this deck is. It can't be very old. Like sometimes I feel like I've seen them all, right? And then like I, I'm always proven wrong <laughs> by tarot tube. And I'm like, how did I miss this? Okay, 2021. 78 card tarot deck on paper cut of paper cut and collage images based on the classic tarot de, de Marseille. Okay, cool. It does explain the image, which is always, always good. Always good. That always helps me. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm stoked on that. It's also black on the sides, which is fun. I mean, it'd be weird to have like a black back and a black front and then like white sides, you know? It, it's like very linen-y. I'm trying to like think of what deck it reminds me of as far as the card stock. It feels, it feels like plasticky, you know? Like it'll hold up. Okay, two more. So the next one, it didn't come in this bag. It came in a different bag that was like too small. But I think on the Discord that I'm in, someone was like, hey, the Tapestry Tarot is on sale. <laughs> I didn't even know the Tapestry Tarot was in print. <laughs> and I was like, uh, yes and yes, please take my money. So, oops, was this in the order too? No, no, because I've done readings with it, okay. This one I first saw on Danny Mystic's channel. She has the French version. I don't know if it's the same cardstock or the same edges because as you can see, this is like square edges. Have I been turning these all around? I'm so distracted by my own thoughts. Okay. And it's all textiles. It's a collage deck of all textiles. And it's so weird and kind of ugly. I love the borders, but that's for a different video. But it's just so cool and weird. So like, here we are. I'm so glad that I like got to grab this because I thought this was going to be one of those elusive ones that would get away. Like, look at this star card. Oh, so cool. So cool. Yeah, it feels very like late 70s, early 80s <laughs> to me. And I grew up with like dolls in the house. Like my grandma really liked dolls, so they don't like really creep me out, but it is decidedly very weird and kind of ugly for sure. I really like the meanings. I like the keywords, like it's a vibe. It's really cool, very special. It's been a very um, fortuitous like first quarter when it comes to decks that I thought were going to be scarce and hard to find and I wasn't really out looking for them that was the best part is that like I just had my ears and eyes open and they came to me you know okay this last one is the literary tarot this was a kickstarter as many of you know many of you probably backed I don't know or maybe didn't I think I backed this three years ago. I'm gonna do a big video about it. I have some extras I wanna show off. I've only flipped through this. Um, I'm just gonna give you like a quick look and then save it for, save all the details for my, my walkthrough video. And if it was worth it to wait three years, who knows? Gotta love a black guidebook. Because of the video, these are still in order. This is, if you haven't heard of this deck, um, it's based off of, every card is based off of a different book, fiction, novel, or story. 
but had to be like written, right? So it's not necessarily like um, the Tarot of the Divine, which are folk tales and kind of oral traditions. These are novellas or novels or short stories that were written and published. And they're mostly classics. And if you want to know more, then um, once I publish my video on it, I will link it below. But it's finally here and it's so wild. I have to say, I thought that I was going to sell this deck because I had been so long and I like saw kind of a, a scathing review. <laughs> and, um, I don't think I will. Honestly, I'm, I'm really happy with it. I'm really excited about it. So if you're interested, definitely, definitely check out the video. It'll probably be out, I don't know, give me a sec in the next week or two. <laughs> um, but I want to say thank you to everyone who traded with me. Thank you to everyone who gave me a heads up on the Tapestry Tarot and the Tildwick Tarot and I'm just so happy to have um, friends online here and share and geek out about things that I can't really do with um, my friends in real life. I mean, I can, of course, they have the patience, but they don't necessarily share the enthusiasm. <laughs> um, so thank you for being here. Thanks for being curious. Thanks for being my friend. And you know, my mom's coming, I gotta go.